Hi there folks, welcome back to the Over 90 Fishing Channel. I hope you're doing really well. Ivy, how are you doing? I'm alright, thank you. How are you? Are you super excited? I'm super excited and super hot. <laughs> so yeah, we've come on a little road trip here. We've driven about three and a half hours directly down south to do something that I haven't done for ages and I don't think you've ever done I've before. I've never, never even been down south. We are on what would be regarded as the most famous streams in the whole of England, if not some of the most famous trout streams in the entire world. We are down in Hampshire. We've come down to three days of absolutely freaking awesome chalk stream fishing so this is day one we're in a beautiful beautiful part of hampshire uh, fishing a river called the anton with a good friend of ours uh, pete mcleod who's invited us down for a day's fishing uh, everything's all set up we're super excited it is going to be the hottest day in the history of the world it already is in it fact already is, yeah. I've, I've never had to sweat getting the camera stuff ready before it's super hot but we're so excited it looks a beautiful we, day we had a look uh, over the fridge in the river and i've seen so many fish already and it's so clear so i'm i'm so excited yeah it's going to be different challenges this isn't it it's clear water it's perhaps a slightly smaller river than we're used to fishing uh, a lot of sight fishing we'll be able to see it all happen hopefully we'll be able to show you guys exactly how chalk stream fishing works what do you reckon let's do this hopefully pete's going to show us the ropes we're going to need some help in this one because we're both pretty new to this but on that note i think we'll go and try and catch some fish <laughs> let's go <laughs> so as i said we're here on the anton today with pete mcleod pete first off thank you very much for inviting us down to a beautiful part it's of the country absolute pleasure Pleasure to have you down here on Hampshire's Chalk Stream. Thank you very much. As I say, it's the first experience for you ever. It's the first time I've fished a chalk stream in oof, seven or eight years, I think. It's been a long, long time. So first off, no expectancy. We'll probably miss them all. <laughs> here you can see the fish. So, you know, you're already one step further that, but on. But the excitement you starts then when you see it, can't you? And the Boom. trembles look, start. Look, it's moving. It's <laughs> going to take a fly. So in terms of fish, what are we expecting from the River Anton? What kind of, what's the, what, what species have we got in here to start with? Well, we've, uh, we've got brown trout. We've got grayling. Um, those are going to be our main two target yep. species uh, in this section at West Fair, which is which is where we uh, we spend most of our time at the moment. Uh, we have a good selection of um, wild brown trout, but also some stockfish as well. Okay, cool. So there's varying degrees of difficulty. Um, you know, for those anglers that want to really test their skills, there's some lovely wild sections at the top. And then for those who are still learning and getting to grips with working on a chalk stream, then we've got some. So maybe slightly less intelligent fish. I hopefully. think we'll have some of those, Ivy, won't we to start with? That'll, <laughs> that, that'll do to start with for the moment. Tell us a little bit more about the beat. How long is it? What kind of rules would we expect here on a chalk stream? For, for the guys who are watching who haven't fished in a place like this before. Chalk streams are an unusual phenomenon, um, especially down here in the sort of, in the cradle of Hampshire. And um, it, it's, it's where fly fishing was born. And uh, through that experience, it developed through the 1900s with the beginnings of dry fly fishing and then skews bringing nymph fishing to the fore um, and it has rem remained consistently quite traditional mm -hmm. in the way that it's fished so up to the 1st of July it's dry fly and upstream only and after the 1st of July here at West, at West Fair we allow nymphing. So we are allowed to throw in nymph we today are it's not to... that because I'd, I'd say but traditionally the, yeah. the, the vision of no. Fishing these chalk streams is upstream, dry, dry fly and all yeah. that stuff, so we but can... No, no, we can nymph today, especially with bright sunny conditions like this. Um, we're probably going to be better off looking for the nymph to begin with, because I think they're probably going to be mostly hugging the bottom, going, where's my sunglasses? <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> As we melt along the riverbank. Yeah. Um, but no, we'll find fish hugged underneath the edge of the bushes, uh, in the reed banks, um, in those sort of slightly deeper holes. We may well find a few small hatches going on against the edge of the reed bed. Um, you know, we might get some uh, some olives, we might get some midge hatches and stuff like that. And later on, I think we'll probably get some good sedge hatches and that's when the river comes alive. It's so, kind of, so, so that kind of traditional river fishing yeah. pattern of, you know, difficult nymph enjoying the day and then exactly. towards the evening, that, that will continue on that the chalk stream. That will continue stream. on the chalk streams. The only difference here is you'll be able to see the fish. So we'll find a fish, we'll select a particular fish and then we'll try and catch that fish and that's what makes it very unique that sounds pretty thick and exciting i think that means then we need to go and try and see a fish and catch a fish i think we do let's go and give it a let's go, go. go on. righty first fish of the day sighted pete's put us on a real big one first up really close in not showing any interest in rising so we're going to put a little nymph over him it's really close quarters this one it's going to be right on top of him just give that a little flip upstream oh heavy flight oh is that stuck in the weed Oh, spook straight away. <laughs> he didn't like that. 
I'm looking for the riser, yeah. Ooh. Okay, didn't like the nymph landing close to him. Pete, I'm actually gonna fish, I'm gonna fish a dry over him. Made a pretty good job of spooking the first fish. There is a second fish up here that's risen a couple of times, it's still there. Just on the just in the little hole on the inside here. He didn't react great when I dropped the nymph behind him, so I just wonder if he's a bit on edge. Yeah. Ah, that's too wide of him. Oh, 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 here he comes. Wow. That is a world-class refusal. <laughs> it doesn't get any closer than that. I'll let him get back on station. <laughs> Jeez. No, he was I don't think so. Counting the turns on the knot. The fact that he moved to it suggests the fly isn't too far wrong. No. You're still pretty confident that he'll eat, you reckon? I think there's a good chance. From the way he moved. Ah, yeah, I see it. So we've got a plan B. So there's two schools of thoughts on this. So you, you can either continue to work the flies, change the flies, and work the fish, which is one way of doing it, or you just move up. To the Having watched that go straight over his bonds, I'm tempted to say the latter, because that was literally right over the top of him. Let's just, let's just move up. I think we'll move so. Up to the other right of I think so. Righty, little fly change. We've just gone a bit smaller. I've actually put on one of IB's favourites, the old foam done, in a size 18. Yeah, uh, you're going to have to leave me with some of those. <laughs> well, we'll see. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, come Ooh. No, no, whoa. Yeah. I just wonder if I'm getting some well, some drag from down here. Is if we sneak up any further, then we I agree. Come right over his head. Oh, that is right over him. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no love, man. <laughs> Should we go back to the interested fish? Yeah, let's do that. He's too small anyway. Yes. Here we go, here we go. <gasps> oh. oh my goodness. <laughs> I think you missed the fly yourself. <laughs> at, least, at least we know it's vaguely right. He wouldn't do that if it wasn't vaguely right, so. I think that's worth a couple more casts. I might just <laughs> leave them for a minute or so. Uh, these, are br to be, these are brilliant refusals. Okay. These are absolute blockbusters. Little Olive, just in front of us. Ooh, yeah, that yeah, might yeah. be a clue. Two. Yeah, that might be a clue. That was little Blue Wing. Blue Wing Olive. Yeah. Perfect. That explains and the rise as well. Go. He's just sloshed something, yeah. yeah. And again, it's and just again. risen again. Has that hatch just started? I think so. Got him! Yes. Finally! Finally! <laughs> it's a huge fish. Absolutely massive fish. Right, what happens now, Pete? Uh, let's bring him down this way yeah. if we can. Let's we'll try actually, and get him out of those weeds. He's going to dictate what's going to happen. I agree with that. I think we're on his terms for the first few minutes here. Get away from that inside. Nope, none of that. They do fight dirty. Let's try and get him on the reel. That's a big as a great rise. Brilliant rise. Where are you going, buddy? Where are you going? Let's keep you upstream. It's an enormous fish. Where are you going? Pete, this one's going back to sea, mate. <laughs> it's a huge fish. I think this could uh, this could last a little bit longer. That was beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah, Textbook. It was a beautiful cast. Yeah, do you know what? It's one of those casts. When it drops, you just know that that's going to rise that fish. He's ready. Actually, we might have a little opportunity there, yeah. Yeah! That is a beautiful that's fish. That's a big fish. Boom! Social distance and all that. Social distance and all that. <laughs> that's a biggie. Pete, that was really freaking cool. Thank you very much. I wasn't expecting a fish of that size awesome. for the whole trip, let alone the first fish. I guess uh, we kind of got lucky there a bit, didn't we? It's not the fish we were fishing for initially, but he just gave himself away. He was just nipping up next to that edge, and then you dropped the fly on, and we both thought, it's going to catch it. It was one of it's those gonna, drops, it's wasn't it? it? For the first time all day, I dropped a fly and thought, that one, it's gonna be, he's eating that. We're not going to do too much with the fish with it being scorching hot. We're trying to keep him in the water, but I'll just give him a quick lift. That is a grand old trout. Real big fish, but we're going to get him straight back. 
Back he goes. Come on, buddy. Let's point you in the right direction. Come on, buddy. There he goes. I beaver off the mark. We can do chalk stream fishing in the end. <laughs> it takes us a little while, but we can do chalk stream <laughs> fishing. <laughs> I reckon that means you're up next, doesn't it, babe? Yes. I think it does. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> So there's a fish just tucked in, about two feet off the bank up here. There's a little gravel hole, and the fish is just sat in there, and he's quite a big fish. My problem is getting it straight. That's just behind him. God, that looked a good cast from me. <laughs> I don't know if I can repeat it. Come on, gently. Oh yeah. Oh, it just spooked. Oh. Yeah, he just spooked. See, but this is what I mean about the, the hot conditions. The fish are tucked right in against the banks. I don't blame them. <laughs> like trying to find some shade, man. I can actually see that fish. Can you not? Anymore. Oh <laughs> no. Still there, still there. It's just dropping back in the sand. So that's way behind him. It is a bit. You've got to keep it tight on this bank as well. Oh, <sighs> the Off the tree, drop. Try and, try and keep that cast a bit shorter. And yeah, t turn it over like that. <laughs> like that straight in the tree. <laughs> oh no. So Ivy's just passed me the rod on this one for the moment, just to see if I can, that's just short of him. Just see if I can get a reasonable drift over him. It's a real tough cast, this one, especially with that breeze. Up and, up and down. Gonna have to swing it through that gap. That was right on his head and he's gonna eat it. And there you are. Got him. Yes. There we go. There we go again. Just gave us a chance. Just a little, a little opportunity nice. to cast at a riser. Oh, he's come right down here. Come on, out of there. Uh, this one's got a little bit more beans, actually, than the, the fish earlier. because he's been in the shade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. to be honest, I can, I can relate to that. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly. Yeah, what's the, what's the uh, river there? Where do you want to land this fish, Pete? Oh, he might be dictating that one. Wow, he is on his way. Down here. We might not be far off. Come on, fish, in you come. Yes, there we go. So got a little bit lucky on that one, having taken the rod off IB to make a really tough cast. All of a sudden this chap rose on the far bank and instinct took over and it just went straight at it and I'm in a lot of trouble. I think IB's definitely got the next couple of shots, but yeah, I've been rewarded with a, another beautiful chalk stream brownie. Again, super hot. Get him straight back. There he goes. Straight under the weed, yeah, don't blame you. I think that's where, where I'd go. Right now, if I could, it's so hot. But Pete, there are fish rising, you're giving us chances here. Well, we've taken a few, we've not taken a few, but there are definitely fish available, even on a hot day like this. There's plenty of fish that are tucked in against the edges, they're refining the corners of the shade. Just gotta winkle them out. Tricky spots, technical spots, but when it comes together like that, really cool. Well, I'm not gonna lie, I feel a little bit guilty about taking that shot off IB, but at the same time, we've all been there, there was a shot there that needed to be taken. I took it. Yeah, I'm going to put those back on because it's really bright. It's just starting to warm up. It's early afternoon and I think this is going to be a sizzler. In terms of the fishing, I'm not going to lie. We've both made this perhaps look a little bit difficult. But we're very lucky that we've got Pete here with us who's been very patient and has helped us through this because in terms of the fishing that we do compared to this, this is a lot more close quarters and definitely it's more visual. And I feel like both of us have um, just struggled a little bit with the, with the kind of close quarters visual aspect of it. I, I know I particularly I just get too excited when I see a fish that close. It looks like the river is going to give us plenty of chances. I'm hoping that as we go through, IB is going to get a few more shots. Hopefully she can have a shot, a big one. And we're going to keep moving up and see if we can find a few more fish. Heading up for that gravel hole there, there's a big fish just on the gravel. Yep, see the Got shadow. Him? Okay, one, two, three, go. Exactly. That's nowhere near the fish. No, just let it drift down. There might be something in on the bank that we can't see. The one sliding down the outside there. Oh yeah. Around the outside. Ooh, 
Oh yeah. yeah. So I just sit oh my god, that's through. massive. Yeah. That fish is huge. That fish is just using under that branch up there. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You can do. Oh, he's coming! He's coming! <laughs> he was he's coming, coming and then he turned around and just fucked off. Yeah, technical term, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. He's just circling around, isn't he? I, I watched him come back up while you were fishing. He feeds on his way back up. He gets to the top and then just turns around. Oh, look. Oh, if he didn't turn around, that would have gone past him. Lovely, lovely. Oh, just he just turned around, didn't he? Yes, yes, yes and gotcha. Yes! Well done. Fantastic. Oh. Well done, Yeva. That was brilliant. <sighs> Made me work for no, it, didn't he? He's going to get nasty in a minute. Yeah, he's trying to shove you in the trees. I'll yeah, try playing off the reel. Let me curve the rod this direction. <laughs> I'm not sure if my heart is going because of the fish or because I'm having a heart attack. Don't go any higher because that's one of the really beautiful fish. There's two fish that Drew okay, just spoke. Try and land him here. Oh, he's going nuts. Gotcha. Oh, that is very cool, and I think it was 100% worth my effort. It was <laughs> worth, so hard. It was worth scrabbling around on your knees, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. So, finally. I actually managed to make a good enough cast to book one of your one of the chalk stream brownies and it was worth the wait for a beautiful beautiful brownie. Oh, oh actually yeah, I'm just gonna put mark for isn't it? Ooh. That was really really cool and I feel like mostly the fish is yours, not mine. So thank you. You're very welcome. But actually it was a beautiful cast. You tucked it right in, dropped it nice and down, just beautifully, and it just... One out of a hundred. The 99 before landed in the tree. Shh, shh. <laughs> don't we can edit those out. We don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is another total snap cast. We were just about to move on and it was definitely IB's shot, but a fish has risen right in front of me and um, I'm a terrible person, so I'm gonna try and catch it without giving you ever a chance. Oh, it's a little bit to the left of him. He has just risen, but I don't think he's gonna move that far. Much closer to this fish than any of the others I've covered so far. Bingo. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it. What did I do wrong, IB? Too soon, too late, just karma. Didn't give me the rod. That's bad juju, that isn't it? Lesson learned. Give IB the rod, always. Oh, that's the cast of the century. Oh, it's going to get pulled out. Second fish, second fish. And oh, you had a look at it too. And he's kind of chasing the fish off, isn't he? Yeah. Okay, just let just let him settle down again. Uh, he's going off down on his patrol. Oh my god, they're both big fish, let's be honest. Okay, yeah, neither of them are particularly small. They're just small to nymph. Yeah, he just nymphed hard. Oh, look at that. That was probably a sedge pupa. You... Oh, did that just turned? Just pop it out again and just stick it in the hole right in front of you. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, it didn't. You kind of drop back to it. Ow. What are you thinking about? That fly sunk. Yeah. Don't hear, oh. Oh, oh no! Don't, don't, move, don't, move, don't, move, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. Look at the colours on that fish. I know. I'm gonna go turf the other one out now. That is a stunning fish. We could put a very small nymph on. Because he might well eat that. I reckon he's munching sedge pupa. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Yep. 
Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> He's going to try and stop you under the trees and make sure yeah. you roll angle this way. Yeah. And it's falling over as well. Yeah, just watch him because he's going to shoot for the trees. He's going to head under there. He's going to, going to try and stuff you in under the, under the branches. Amazing, 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 amazing. Okay, he's an angry fish, isn't he? Time. Just keep him away from the edge of the bank. Yep, he wants to go. He wants to go. Look at the colours on that. I know, it's a stunning fish, isn't it? Really unhappy though. Spent the entire morning Biggest feeding moles. that trout. <sighs> Only to be taken. Oh, take your time. Okay, just lift his head gently. Gently, and it's in it comes. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what a fish! That that is, oh my god, that's beautiful! <laughs> what a fish! <laughs> you got the one. You got the one. Oh god. Oh my god. an absolute cracking fish. God, that's beautiful. What a fish to catch. I don't know. I think if I was on my own, I would have never caught it. But Pete, the guide, the man for the day, he knows these fish. He knows where they are. He knows what they're doing, that they're cruising around. He knows what they're eating. So I think half of the fish kind of belongs to him. But it's such a beautiful fish on a really, really hot day. to go. And I think now, you know how Andy said it's a three day trip? We can just go home. My trip is done. How cool was that? Oh my goodness, I'd be what a fish. What a start to our three day trip. Absolutely incredible. If you'd have, if you'd have offered me that start, this morning, I would have bitten your hand off. Four fish in the net, one miss. Obviously, I had to miss one. It's not Obviously. A, it's not a you and me vlog without me missing a fish, is it? At the same time, I think my day has been complete, fully and truly. Although I am very excited about the spinnerfall and to see like what's gonna. Well, I don't know. Do we get spinnerfall here? I'd have thought so. Yeah, we'll have to speak mm. to Pete about that over lunch, maybe, which is the plan for the moment. Uh, there's, there's a fish just risen to my right and very distracted. Enjoying it so far? Loving it. In what way is it different? I think side fishing fish? is really, really cool. Like genuinely seeing the fish and it gets you really excited. I think at first, before I landed my first fish, that's what was getting me flustered really quickly because I'm seeing that fish. And if I can't get the cast straight or whatever, you just get too excited just by the fact that you can see how big they are and what they're doing. You know what I mean? I think we both lost our um, doo-doo for yeah. a few minutes there, didn't yeah, we? There's a period of adjustment did. where we were both like, oh my God, there's fish everywhere. We, we need to catch all of these fish. When actually, if you just slow yourself down, take your time, pick the right fly, get the right drift, Try not to hit the trees. And it's very helpful that we have the, the just the man for the job too. Yeah, we've got a full-time professional yeah. tour out fisher and flight fishing guide <laughs> here to help us through this because I can absolutely guarantee you if it wasn't for Pete McLeod, we wouldn't have many fish in the net. True. Speaking of Pete McLeod, I'd actually like to head off into the shade for a start because I am burning and have a quick chat to Pete about the Anton, about the fishing and all that stuff. I think it'd be a nice way to break up our day a little bit and then we can go grab some food and some drink. Deal. Let's do that. Let's go and do that. Let's have a chat with Pete. Pete, what a fantastic after, hot afternoon's fishing that is. It is the hottest day in the history of the world, I reckon. I've not fished in heat like this for a long time. It's like being back on the flats, isn't oh, it? Oh, isn't it just, isn't it just, I am pouring with sweat. But uh, we've risen five. Yeah. We've put four in the net. I mean, if, you, if you'd have offered me that three or four hours ago, I would have bitten your hand off for it. I think that's fished really well, given the conditions. Everybody says that you can't catch fish in very bright sunlight. And they always say that, but actually, Especially on the chalk strip. I think maybe that's maybe true on some other streams, but here on the chalk streams, we've got a little bit of an advantage because you can see the fish. You know roughly where they're going to lie. You find the shady spots. And if there is a shady spot, then often those fish are moving. There might be a small hatch or something going on underneath. And you can often find fish and they will eat. 
Do you think that possibly has something down to the constant temperature of the water? Could that be a factor in hotter definitely, weather? Definitely, and I think the, the whole chalk stream system and how that works definitely contributes to that. So the water you're seeing in the river right now probably fell three months ago. Oh, wow. So it's falling up in the chalk, percolates down through the chalk into the aquifers, and then we see it come down into the river systems. And that is why these rivers have such consistent temperatures, uh, very um, alkaline um, in pH. So you get this abundant weed growth. Very nutrient rich Very water. nutrient rich. So we have huge amounts of bug life. And uh, you know, the entomological side down here is absolutely phenomenal. If you got a kick net and went out there, you'd probably come over 25 different yep. species immediately. We can tell from the health of the fish, there is clearly an awful lot of food for, just, for these fish. It's like a non-stop smorgasbord coming down the river for them. And, and that is just one of the joys of being on the chalk. Provided fish. big, healthy fish like the one that IB just landed. What a fish. <laughs> tell us a little bit more about the River Anton, because I think possibly when people think of chalk streams, it might not be the first one that springs to mind. Yeah, no, for sure. So the Anton is a tributary of the Test. Um, I mean, everybody's heard of the River Test. Uh, probably the most famous chalk stream in the UK, if not perhaps the world, I don't know. But the Anton is an upper tributary. It's one of my favorite tributaries. So you've got the Diva and the Anton, and then further down you have the Dun. And this one is just, it's a little bit narrower. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, it's a bit more intimate to fish. I find that intimacy is, is just, I, I don't want to be chucking a big line right across a river yep. all the time. And you can sneak up on the fish here and it's not too far to cast. So it's more about a technical fishing ability rather than lobbing a long line. Absolutely. And actually it's an adjustment that IB and I needed to make earlier. So we actually, for the first time in a long time, shortened our leaders up. This was <laughs> closer quarters than perhaps we both imagined. Uh, and I think, I speak for myself, possibly IB as well. Yeah, we found that actually by shortening the leaders up, we could make ourselves more accurate. You're right, it is intimate. You are close quarters with these fish. And if you get it right, they're oh, pretty the willing there. feeders. They are willing. Yeah, they are willing. So, um, geographically, Pete, whereabouts are we in South England at the moment? So right now we are uh, just south of Andover. We're in the heart of the Test Valley. Um, we've got Stockbridge literally just down the road. Goodwith Clatford just above us. And we have this section at West Fair, which is our beat for Aardvark MacLeod. Um, it's 1600 metres, which is quite long for a chalk stream yep. beat. And we normally fish it from anything from two to six rods. We try to keep the numbers down. We like to have plenty of space for our anglers. So we've got a lovely hut down here. Um, it's got sort of gas barbecue and gas cooker and it's pretty comfortable, but it's a great spot for bringing parties, bringing mates, that kind of thing. And it's nicely tucked out of the way as well. It's very, very accessible, but actually- Easily off the A303, easy to get at. Really, really nice piece of water. Yeah. Uh, good stocks of uh, wild and stockfish by the sounds both. of it? Yep, no, both. We have to maintain the, the, the stock levels with stockfish. But... I think the real surprise so far, not that we've put one in the net yet, but a huge number of grayling. I would assume um, possibly they're not only do you offer trout fishing during the summer, but do you let people fish this for yeah, grayling during the winter? No, we sell the grayling as well. So you can do, there's, there's both options there. So there's if someone wants options. to fish this in the winter yeah. for the grayling, they can come and do that on nymphs. Yep, exactly. Fantastic. Yep. That's something that I've been. Well, you'll have to come back and have, have a to crack come back at down it. and do because the, the quality of the grayling fishing. Uh, some of the grayling are quite big. There's some big fish in here. Yeah, we'd really like to try and get one of those in the net for you guys because there's some really good fish. Uh, unusually, uh, so close quartered. Again, it, well, I, certainly again, I speak for IB here. Maybe we're not used to stalking grayling at quite that range. You can get onto these fish. The way, if you watch Alex when he's fishing. You watch him, he'll crawl up. He literally crawls up and he'll be almost opposite the fish. Yeah. And he's literally just swinging a nymph and he's watching every single movement of that fish. And you can get really close to these fish. And we're beginning to do the same thing with the dry fly. Yep. So rather than the traditional long distance dry fly fishing and sitting on a bench and waiting for stuff to rise, you can find your fish and you can get really close if you're prepared to be a bit sneaky beaky and crawl yep. around like, you know, I'd be crawling and, 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 and I crawling around on our knees. Hey, paid off. You've got to get underneath it because of the fact that a lot of the chalk streams have got that higher bank and we can't wade. So the only time we've been in the river is to release fish because of the heat really and to make sure that they go back safely. So otherwise you don't wade chalk streams. Yeah. And therefore to actually get yourself into a position, you can get underneath the fringe and you can crawl right up on top of the fish, but you've got to keep low. And so many people don't, you know, they come blundering along the bank and, yeah, and then they yeah, wonder why yeah. the fish spook. 
and they do and then one spooks and then it runs up and spooks the next one and spooks the next definitely one. there's the, we've definitely had some indirect spooks haven't we we've yeah. pushed pushed fish onto fish i think particularly yeah. early doors i'd be in i perhaps a little bit rusty so pete let us know how people can actually get down here and fish this stretch of the anton because i think i haven't seen ib catch that huge fish just then every man and his dog is going to want to come and fish this place <laughs> well it's very simple just give us a call at aardvark mcleod um it's either www.aardvarkmcleod.com or 01980 847 389 or just mail at com, and we would be delighted to get you down to Westfair and uh, and any other beats down here. All of that information will be in the description box in the uh, area below the video so if you're interested in finding out more about the Anton, Pete, Aardvark McLeod and catching some really freaking cool fish check the description box for more details. I think our plan is for the moment to possibly go and have a hydration session. I think we mm. need to go and rehydrate. Maybe a little beer as well. Maybe a little bit of a cold rehydration Peroni. And then perhaps come back into this refreshed into the what's hopefully touch wood going to be a really really interesting evening session that you guys are going to want to stick around and watch. Wow crikey so Pete has just treated us to an absolutely delicious lunch. We had a nice long lunch the heat's gone out of the day now. It, the temperature's a lot lower, it feels more fishy. Uh, IB and I are getting back ready, we're fully hydrated. IB's got enough coffee down and power for the next four weeks. And the hope is that we're gonna catch a few more fish before the end of the day. I think we're gonna get more opportunities, certainly the conditions feel better. Whether or not I've eaten too much food to be able to make the necessary cast, here she is. He has. <laughs> you always got a fish on a full stomach and we've definitely got one of those, but now it's time to go and catch a few. Right, so I just nipped to the car to get my change of sunglasses because I need the yellows. Left IB down here watching the river for me. And look what's happened over here. What's happened, Yeva? Nothing. What's happened, Yeva? Nothing. Have you got a little fishy there? Well, I might have caught my first chalk stream grayling, but whatever. That's the last time I'm leaving you on your own on a chalk stream. Never again. Let's have a look at it, this cheating fish. So unbeknown to Andy, because he doesn't need to know, he left me with some rising fish on the water with a rod. What am I supposed to do? Just wait? Well, I'm not going to do that. And in all honesty, I thought I can do it and catch it and put it back before he gets back. I didn't realize he's going to be back that quick. So yeah, caught in action. Uh, it's uh, my first chalk stream grayling. It's a very pretty little guy. And I think we're going to put him back. And I think he's going to grow up to be like a three pound fish. I've just seen a fish fry. And it, I think, I think you should go and catch a fish. Thanks, Ivy. That's really kind of you. So we're going for a very quick change of scenery here. Um, Pete's actually driving us to a different part of the water, a little bit further up. It felt very quiet down there. We, there were a few more guys fishing who may well have given that area a pretty good going over. So for the last hour, we are on the move. Hopefully we'll find a few more rising fish because I'd say it was very quiet down there, but we are at the best time of day. I've no idea where we're going, we're just following Pete's car at the moment, but it's going to be good. Righty, Pete's board us upstream to an area where the, the river actually narrows considerably. There's still quite a lot of water coming down, it just goes through a narrower river channel, it's much deeper. And while we haven't seen a rise yet, we've got an area that is going to be worth prospecting. Just double back and ah, rise further up at the corner. So we'll start to make our way up there. You reckon we need to cover the water on the way up? Or just go straight up? Ooh, ooh, that's not the same fish, is it? No, that's a different fish. He's gonna see that. Got him, got him. Lovely little sip, that. Quite sure what this is. What have we got? Trout, big dark trout. Yeah, very angry, very upset. Angry, yeah, ruined this day. Whoa, 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 okay, you're going back that way, that's fine. Absolutely, he's just giving us a little chance there, hasn't he? Tiny little sip. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, he'll have been sat here all day doing that. Yep. Sip, sip, sip. Very, very happy, no one's been up here, and you've wrecked his day. Day ruined. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> he might be getting close actually. Pete, we might be able to stun him in at that. No, nah, maybe not. Okay. No. Oh, plink. Off one of his teeth. 
Yeah, he's still a rocket, isn't he? <laughs> he's still a rocket. He's not ready. Mm, can't I'm get his head up either. I'm not taking a stab. No, at I agree. Ooh. Don't let him go around the corner. <laughs> around the corner is Narnia. There you go, you might have a little shot there, actually. Yes, good stuff. Good spot change, Pete. That's, That's a beautiful overwintered fish, that is. All you, that one. Oh, yeah, lovely fish. Beautiful fish. Wow. Really, really cool. Nice to get a fish late. Pete reckons there's going to be time for a couple more, so we're not going to, we're not going to spend too long with this one. Just give him a very quick lift there. Beautiful brownie. But we're going to get this guy straight back because we've got more fish to catch. Ivy, come take this rod quick. What's that tree on your back, Carl? Lovely. Yep. Oh, little wild loop. Lovely. Not quite good, but you know. It will do. It's off, I think. No, it's off? not. No. It's just in the bushes really somewhere. Is it in? Beautiful. Beautiful wild fish. Yeah, very, very pretty. And Beautiful. absolutely smashed it as well. What a stunning Stunner. little guy. But are we going to put him back? Not very gently, but. Hmm. Hold on. Smashed it. You ready for the. That was a warm up. That was a warm up. You now ready? we're going after a big fish. It's not Andy's turn. He had his chance. That is it. Okay, let's do it. Oh, there he's right on the bend. In the mirror, so I can actually see it. Find it again. Find it again, another one. Yeah, it's floating. Okay. Take off another yard of line. How much is yard? Uh, three quarters. Oh of no. Ooh. That's the fish, isn't it? Is it out? Oh, we're hitting everything. Do you think you've got a clear shot? That's a lovely cast. Yes! Yes! Oh my god. Literally the first cast I actually was able to put it in this. It's literally place. the first cast that landed in the water. Yeah. Oi! What's the first true cast though? Bang, he hit it. Straight away. Where is he? Because I can't see him. Uh, he's going downstream. Don't don't follow him. Yeah, he's there. I don't want him going down there. I have no idea where the fish is. Oh, he's just there. Ooh. Keep him out of those That is a beautiful oh, wow. trap. <laughs> That's that George. That is George. <laughs> George, meet Yeva. Yeva, meet George. Hey, old me, dog. Great job, guys. Well done. So cool and so exciting. I don't know what was wrong with me there for a second because, like Andy made fun of me, I just could not land that fly anywhere near the fish. It was everywhere, but not in the water where it needed to be. Uh, thankfully, I had a very patient guide who just calmed me down very quickly and I was able to 
get the fly where it needed to be to help me and catch George, who is a massive fish. Second huge trout on the River Anton on a beautiful chalk stream in a beautiful day. And I think that finishes off my day really well. We're gonna put him back. I'd be what an amazing effort that was. What a fish to finish on. I know, right? And to be fair, all the fish that we caught today were quite epic. That's, that's been a simply incredible day's fishing for two people who haven't done a lot of short stream fishing. Including my sneaky little grayling. Oh, your sneaky grayling, that was not on, but there's absolutely no doubt today was only possible because of Pete McLeod. Show socially distanced at the back there. Promises told me looks. Just behind. <laughs> Pete, thank you so much yeah. for today. What Guys, a cool day. I've really been, enjoyed that. For me, it's been an absolute joy to show you what we have here. And I'm so glad that you've enjoyed it. Uh, it's pretty bloody special, eh? It's Lovely. so stunning over here. It's so, so beautiful. I just hope that the camera and the video just shows at least the tiniest glimpse of how actually stunning it is over here, what we can see and experience today. Well, it's had both facets, hasn't it? It's had the daytime stalking, taking you know fish that you can see and the, the complications that that has, and then the evening coming out, trying to find these sedge sippers, totally. the late evening risers. And the good amount of like big quality fish. These are all big fish, available. apart from yeah. apart from your sneaky grayling, which Boy. doesn't count anyway. <laughs> so this is this is only the first day of our three day adventure, isn't it? We've got a couple more days down here on the chalk streams. Unfortunately, the next two we're without an expert guide. So we're gonna probably fly. <laughs> so what we need to do again is say thank you very much to Pete and Arvar from Lockout for Pleasure, setting this guys. up. Really, really enjoyed it. It's been awesome having you. Thank you very much to you people there in the internet land for watching right the way through this vlog. Really appreciate that. Keep an eye out for the next episode coming up because we're down here for a little bit longer. Check all the links in the description box below. If, yeah, if you want to know more about the fishing here on the Anton or anything more about Aardvark McLeod, check the description box. All the links are in there. All the kit that we use is also linked in the description box, so check that out. And we'll see you guys again very, very soon for some more fishing and stuff. Let's go catch a fish. Take care, folks. Bye bye. See ya. Hi, <laughs> yeah, Beasel. So, Yever and I were packing the stuff up. We thought we'd finish the vlog and it was the end of the day. And just while we were doing that, Pete said, I'm just going to go and have another little flick just at the end, just in case. There might be another fish in that corner. And he's only gone and caught the biggest fish of the day. Lesson here is don't let your guide have a cast at the end of the day because it'll always go badly. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Massive. It's huge. And straight back. Nicely done. Go to fight another day. Right, no more fishing for Pete. What's his name? Hmm. Gordon. What should we call, what should we call him? Malcolm. Malcolm. Mike. Good old Mal. Yeah. Oi. <laughs> the old trout. Is that it? Is that the end? I don't know, Pete. You're going to catch another one? I can't see the tiny more flies on. <laughs> I might have to go home. <laughs> I think we'll call it now.